Hello, I'm Justina for Be For Life Growing Chef. And today I will show you how to make a couple of easy recipe ideas for your breakfast. So if you haven't heard before about us, we support all the vegetarians and vegans. And we have a lot of resources and recipes on our website. Please check those out. So let's start with making our pancake batter. So for pancakes, we're going to use banana as our egg replacer. So as you know, there's a lot of different egg replacers you could use, which you can buy in a packet, or you can use flax seed or chia seed, even apple cider vinegar. So today, we're going to use bananas. So if you have banana, you might want to mash it up with a fork or blend it with a food processor. I have blended my banana together with my almond milk, which I'm going to add into my batter. Uh, here I have flour. So we'll start with adding some uh, almond, so it's ground almonds. So it's really rich in magnesium, vitamin E, and actually has protein. So just adding extra goodness into our pancakes. So that's going to be mixed together. Then we have um, baking powder. So we're going to have a tablespoon of baking powder. So now all the dry ingredients are ready in here. As you see, we didn't add any sugar. So because the banana is going to be sweet, obviously you want to aim to have your bananas really nice and ripe. So it already has some dots and perhaps you wouldn't be happy to put it in your bag for your lunch. So that's just one idea how you could use your bananas. So just mixing our dry ingredients. So I'm using the jug. So it's just not only going to reduce the amount of dishes to wash, but it's going to be really nice and easy to pour into the frying pan. The frying pan is heating up slowly, so it's not on the high heat. So now I'm going to add my almond milk and blitz banana. So banana is already in here. So you can always use any dairy replacement. So you can use soya milk or any other dairy-free milks for this. You can even use a leftover yogurt if you like for a little bit thicker consistency. So mixing that up. You don't want to over mix too much. And then we're going to add a tablespoon of vegetable oil just to add a little bit of extra fat in there. So batter is quite thick because the banana was quite thick. What are we going to do? We're going to leave it to rest for around five minutes. So all this flour just absorbs extra moisture from the almond milk. So leave that aside. So whilst the frying pan is heating and this is waiting to be cooked, let's uh, start prepping ingredients for our scramble. So it's going to be tofu scramble. So we're going to be using tofu. You can use a couple of different tofus. So either you can buy a tofu, which is already really firm and it's in the liquid, or you can buy tofu, which is silken tofu. So this particular tofu, which I'm using today, is silken, and it says Japanese on the packet. That means it's been set in calcium. So it's not only rich in protein, low in fat, and actually has calcium in there. So it's just a really nice boost for your breakfast. So we'll start with chopping some extra ingredients to add flavor. So as you know, tofu is from soya. So it's a soya curd which doesn't have a lot of flavor. That means we need to add a flavor. So we will use uh, fresh uh, vegetables. So obviously you can feel free to add anything you like in this case. Could be mushrooms and onions. So I'm chopping red pepper and some tomatoes. Small ones are really nice and juicy, so just cutting them in half. And then we're going to chop garlic. So just leaving everything on the chopping board. So you can always buy a lazy garlic or already garlic in the tube which has been ground. So there's different versions of garlic you can buy if you're feeling a little lazy. So you don't have to do that. And the option you can grate your garlic too. So that's nice and ready in here. So then we're going to have some sweet corn and what we're going to help to kind of have more color is turmeric. So we're going to use turmeric to add a little bit more yellow and then mustard. Mustard not only going to have flavor, but it will have some more yellow. Obviously flavoring with herbs, but that is a really good option as well. So the frying pan is slowly heating up. We're going to add a little bit of um, coconut oil. You feel free to not to add any oil at all or use any oil you prefer. Just a little bit for the first couple of pancakes. As you know, first pancake might be burnt, like 
any pancakes you make, but that's up to you. So you can add anything or nothing at all. So for first pancake, I add some oil. The rest, obviously, frying pan is non-stick, so I don't have to add anything else. So we start making our pancakes. So batter is already foaming a little bit because um, of the baking powder reacting a little bit with our other ingredients. So just making sure it's all nice and melted. So you want your heat on medium high, so you don't want it to burn straight away. You want it to add some extra fluffiness and air into it. So just making sure everything is nice and melted. And obviously at this stage, when you pour pancake batter in that, feel free to add blueberries or bananas, anything you like to add extra. So making sure it's nice and warm when you start adding pancakes. So now we're going to start pouring. You can always use a um, ladle to do this too, if you don't have a jug. So it's really nice and thick. So just adding that in. So it's depending how big you want your pancakes to be, I will try to make a stack. So we're trying to get a couple of round pancakes to make a lovely stack. Obviously, if you make your banana a mushroom with a fork, so that will make it a little bit more chunky. So that just be mindful when you're pouring it out so it doesn't catch and stay inside. So in the bottom, you're going to have a couple of pancakes and loads of bananas. So that's drying off. So what I'm looking at while I'm making these pancakes, we're going to start making these small bubbles. So you're going to see the batter lifting and creating a bubble. So when it all better will be full of bubbles, but they haven't popped just yet, I want to flip them, so just trap them in, cook another layer, so we'll have all this lovely air trapped inside. That's how we're going to get all this extra fluffiness in here. So I'm going to take my spatula and wait until I see them bubbles rising and then flip them as soon as I can. And obviously, if it's not cooking, you can always increase a little bit more heat. We just want to cook all the way through, as well as having a little crust on the bottom and the top. So we're just going to cook those. Um, depends how you like your pancake serve. You can always add some fruit and syrups, even just think simple with lemon and sugar. Why not? And that's just maybe could be served as a dessert after a meal or your breakfast. It depends how much time you have. As you see, it doesn't take long at all. So it's just really effortless, really nice breakfast you can make any day. So I'm gonna flip those soon. So we're already seeing some bubbles and the bubbles on the corner starting to slowly kind of burst. That means it's ready to be flipped. So we're gonna easily flip the bubbles. So obviously take care when flipping because these might be a little bit more tender than your regular pancakes as like you would normally have maybe from ready-made batter. So just kind of flipping those up. Okay, so that's nice and easy. Some of them might not look as pretty as you put them in, and obviously you can make those without bananas if you like them to be more kind of firm. So you can use more baking powder, self-raising flour, and apple cider vinegar. That would be another option would just create extra bubbles inside and be nice and fluffy, especially if you don't like bananas. But for this specific recipe, if bananas have been blitzed, you're not gonna be tasting any bananas inside. So it's kind of a good thing if you don't like bananas. For myself, I love bananas, so we're gonna serve it on the side. So when you have your bananas ready to put in the mixture, you can have a couple of slices just on the side to reserve for later. It's not gonna change the recipe too much. So that's cooking really nice and fluffy. So it's already getting a lot of volume and depending how much oil you put in there, it's gonna have crusty ends as well. So my stack will be out of four pancakes, which are really nice and fluffy. That means we'll create a lovely layers. To add extra goodness, you can actually spread them with peanut butter or almond butter in this case, because we already have almonds in there for extra protein. So extra, extra for your breakfast, good start and ready to go. So our pancakes are ready. They might look a little bit different depending on your what kind of milk you use. So if you left your bananas blend for a side for a while, it might become a little bit more gray because of uh, bananas being exposed to oxygen. But obviously, if you want lighter color, just cook as soon as you prepare your batter. So we have a couple of pancakes ready. Set them on the side and I'll show you how to serve them. Um, and our recipes for these will be on our website.
So that's really nice preparation for possibly Pancake Day if you're looking for some ideas, which is coming soon, very soon. Okay, so our pan is nice and warm, slightly oiled, so we can start making our scramble in here. I will start by adding a touch more coconut oil, just because I want to fry off my um, peppers. So we'll start with adding my peppers in here. It's nice and sizzling. So I want to add my garlic towards the end because it will start burn really quickly. Okay, so that's not too ready. So that's the ready. Just give it some color. Sometimes when you need breakfast, you want fresh and crunchy vegetables. So just having some color, but not cooking it all the way through. Okay. Brilliant. So now we're gonna add my tomato. So for this recipe, you can exclude all the tomatoes and peppers. Possibly garlic would be nice to still include, just so you could have uh, some extra flavors in there. Obviously, if you don't like garlic, feel free to just exclude that. So this is really easy to make into breakfast. So then you can uh, add some uh, bacon or vegan sausages, baked beans, some lovely toast, just to make it, bulk it up and make it into something lovely. I like to add mushrooms and spinach on the side with some garlic, just lovely flavor. Okay, so just wanted to, our tomatoes to get a little bit more brown, a little bit more squishy. Okay. So at this stage, we're gonna start worrying about herbs. So what are we gonna put? So possibly let's go a little bit of um, oregano and basil. So because these are dry herbs, you want to add them kind of first. So they actually are exposed to heat directly. So it releases the aromas and all these lovely flavors. So just adding a little bit of it in and just give it a couple of minutes to um, kind of coat with all the silver oil and juices from the vegetables. So next ingredient we're going to be using is um, special salt. So it has silver inside. It's Karanamar Black Salt, which you can have from any health stores or online. So it has a really eggy kind of smell. So if you're not a fan of egg smell, possibly you should exclude this. But if you kind of want to add this extra flavor and smell, feel free to sprinkle that in. It's quite a strong salty flavor, is it salt, which is sea salt. So make sure you don't put too much in there, as well as really pungy smell. Mix that in. And then we're going to add our sweet corn, so a drink of sweet corn. So we can't trying to create a rainbow in here, just adding some extra color because our tofu is quite pale. So we're going to just put it in this in here. I already opened it and drained the liquid. So in here, it has been quite a bit of liquid, so you want to cut it off and drain it. So now I'm going to mash it up a little bit, so it kind of forms lovely chunks. So when you're happy with size of your tofu, uh, smaller chunks or larger chunks, then you just use it in a frying pan. So now we're going to add mustard. So mustard will add a little bit of colour and really nice tangy flavour to this. We're going to start adding our pepper, so just fresh ground pepper. And uh, one of the hero turmeric, but just a little bit on the end of the smallest teaspoon you have in the house. Just a little sprinkle in there. So you just want to add a little bit of color. It's really strong, otherwise you can have really yellow, vibrant scramble. It's not a bad thing, but if you're serving with someone who's not very keen about eating tofu scramble, and, or possibly trying the first time, just try to go easy on turmeric. Mix it all in and just want to cook until it started to release all the liquid. So you don't want to leave it for too long. You don't we're not trying to get it brown or any other color because vegetables are already cooked. Just cooking it, mixing it a little bit. So make sure it's the consistency is really nice. So once again, depending what you're serving with, it just could be by itself on with toast. Just add extra things as you like. 
Obviously, you can add a handful of spinach or any other vegetables. Be mindful of salt releasing all the juices from vegetables. So possibly if you add spinach or mushrooms, will be even more watery. So in that case, you will need to cook it up uh, sooner and a little bit longer. So the mushrooms will be added to one of the first items you add in just to release all the juices. All right. So that's cooking nice and lovely. So just a couple more minutes. So I will serve my scramble with some salad leaves. I just a big fan of um, all the crunchy salad leaves just together kind of mixed in. So I don't want them to be wilted. So I don't add them straight in the frying pan. I will just add them on the side. So I mix them in when I eat. So that looks quite cool. So we're trying to push it around and check for any extra juices coming out of the tofu. When you can't see any extra juices, then you remove that from the heat and it's ready to serve. And when you add a mustard, make sure if you're trying to eat gluten-free diet, make sure there's uh, no gluten in mustard because the mustard actually has gluten. So just check that on the package that is friendly. So we're just serving our um, tofu scramble. So it looks quite vibrant. It smells of lovely Italian herbs, and that's brilliant. Our pancakes um, in here, I added some extra bananas, sliced them before I add them in the batter. One of my favorite things is just to add um, soya yogurt. So I have cherry soya yogurt and then some uh, jam. So it's homemade damson jam. So just a little bit in here because pancakes are already quite sweet. And if you're serving for someone special or you're just treating yourself, or perhaps cooking for children, some vegan sprinkles. Make sure there's no shellac in here and it's completely vegan friendly. So simplest ones are just either dried fruits, that's raspberries, or in this case, just stars made of sugar. So just a generous sprinkle around, just to create something really cute. So here we go. So we have our pancakes and our scramble ready so i hope you enjoyed this and possibly got some ideas for breakfast because veganery never too late to start so make your start and perhaps if you run out of breakfast ideas that's something you can try and i hope you enjoy this and if you need more recipes please out check our website and we have plenty of publications to read thank you for watching see you now